live in the morning on KTRS. All right, Brad Melke joins us, ABC News correspondent from New York, who is following the mudslinging, not between Republicans and Democrats, but between Republicans and Republicans. Brad Melke, what is going on? Well, we saw the finger pointing start shortly after the health care debacle that unfolded uh, a week ago. And now, though, Donald Trump is going squarely after the House Freedom Caucus. In a tweet yesterday, he said that this group of 30 lawmakers will hurt the entire Republican agenda if they don't get on the team and fast. He said we must fight them and Dems in 2018. Now, that is the line that everyone's paying attention to. Does that mean that Donald Trump would support primary opponents to these 30 influential far-right lawmakers? I mean, these are people who, like Donald Trump, campaign on the idea that they are, you know— that they are, you know, stiff-spined men that aren't going to men and women that aren't going to back down from a challenge. Donald Trump ran that way. Well, what happens now when the president of the United States is telling voters, "Don't vote for that person. Don't reelect your congressman. Instead, vote for the person I'm putting forward." That 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 if that happens, that's a big deal. Well, it's one thing to go after Democrats in the uh, in the elections, but he's going after his own party. He needs them. For the next legislative battle down the line, how is that going to play out? Yeah, that's exactly right. The, 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 the strategy here is fascinating to watch because for the next two years, like it or not, Donald Trump has to work with the Freedom Caucus because uh, with about 30 of them, all, all you know he needs to have any piece of his legislation torpedoed is to have 20 or 30 congressmen back out. Well, if you're dealing with a block of, thir of 30 congressional members that, that you're picking a fight with, that's not going to work out for you so well math-wise, particularly if Democrats are lined up against you. So what he seems to be betting right here is that he can kind of uh, use the stick instead of the carrot and, and get them to submit. This seems to be a negotiating tactic more than anything, because if he really plans on alienating them, then that's not going to work out well. It seems like not just Donald Trump is upset with the Freedom Caucus. It seems like many in the House are upset, including this op-ed piece by Adam uh, Congressman Adam uh, Kinslinger, who was a Illinois re Republican congressman uh, says we're, we're the Charlie Brown party and the Freedom Caucus is Lucy and they keep taking the football away from us and it's got to stop. Yeah, he, he basically said that, you know, there, there were moderate Republicans that were going away from the health care bill. But he said those moderate Republicans could have gotten to yes, that they, that, that wasn't going to be a huge issue. It was that the Freedom Caucus was forcing so many concessions that eventually it became clear they were never going to vote yes, and they forced the bill to get to a point where also, where it just became a bad bill, where moderates all of a sudden couldn't vote yes either. So he really is blaming this squarely on them. But then you have uh, you know, Representative Thomas Massey. He tweeted yesterday, real Donald Trump, it's a swamp, not a hot tub. We both came here to drain it. Swamp care pulse at 17%. Sad. So these are, like I said, these are not people that campaigned on the idea of backing down. Uh, some of them are being hailed in their districts for standing up to what they saw as a bad bill. Question will be when it comes to a choice of if they have if voters are forced to make a choice between Donald Trump, who they love, and their congressman, who they love, which one are they going to choose? Well, but they're also aren't they in the safest districts known to mankind? I mean, these are yeah. these are Tea Party guys from Tea Party districts. No, that's absolutely right. But but those Tea Party districts also voted for for Donald Trump. So the question will be where their loyalty actually lies. Um, for, for at least a few of these congressmen have gone back to their districts and they've been really patted on the back. So at this point, they're not feeling too much pressure. Donald Trump is trying to amp it up a little bit. But people like Justin Amash, you know, from Michigan, he said, again, using the swamp rhetoric, say, saying it didn't take long for the swamp to uh, to drain Donald Trump. Uh, everyone succumbs to the D.C. establishment. Um, so these are basically people saying, yeah, Donald Trump, if you want to get in bed with Paul Ryan and these uh, House Republican leaders that we've been railing against for a while now be my guest but but we're not going to change for you anytime soon paul ryan's job in jeopardy as speaker of the house i mean it, it would take more than this group of 30 lawmakers but the house freedom caucus was instrumental in getting john boehner out as speaker of the house uh, paul ryan knew how important this group was when he came in that's why he said i'm not going to do this job unless the house freedom caucus gives me their explicit endorsement that's what ended up happening happening that's why he took the job but this group obviously can turn against you, and they can really get a lot of support uh, for, for their own cause when they need to. So I, I don't think he's feeling particularly comfortable right now. Brad Melke, good stuff. ABC News correspondent. Have a good week. Thanks. Thank you. 745, Big 550 KTRS. Don't look now. Opening day is right around the corner. Sunday night, Cubs-Cardinals. We'll talk about it in five minutes. 745, Big 550.